Well, as you've seen from the introduction, um, the banger certainly keeps my uh, my nephews and my uh, and my grandchildren amused. And uh, I'm afraid they have frightened the dogs and cats a bit, but um, that's a risk you'll have to take if you make one of these. The first thing we're going to need is some corrugated cardboard. And we need a fairly big box, and here I've got a corrugated cardboard box, that we've got to be able to get out of, the, out of one of these flat sides here. We've got to be able to get 360 millimetres square. So we'll open up the box. This is just ordinary corrugated cardboard, single ply corrugated. If we look underneath here, we shall see that we've damaged one of the edges. So we're going to have to cut, say, 50 or 60 millimetres off of this nice straight edge, because when we pulled the box apart, um, we destroyed the corrugations underneath. To get rid of this um, rubbishy area underneath here, we're going to mark off approximately 60 millimetres. We're going to take 60 millimetres off here to start with. So if I put a couple of marks on here like this at 60 millimetres. So what I'm going to do is cheat slightly. I'm going to use this piece of corrugated cardboard as a ruler, a straight edge. And I'm going to mark a line across there. So what we're now going to do is from this line, we're going to measure down this crease line here. We're going to use, we're going to cut down this crease line. We're going to measure 360 millimetres from a line that we've just drawn here, and 360 millimetres across here. And again, we use our piece of cardboard. And now we'll turn the cardboard round and we'll do exactly the same thing the other way. We'll measure 360 degrees, 360 millimetres off of this straight line here. 360 millimetres. So now we've made, we've drawn our 360 millimetres square. If you're old and grey like Grandad here, um, you'd be using a Stanley knife or something. Um, but because possibly you may be a little bit younger than, um, than I am, you might be better asking Mummy if you can use a pair of her scissors. So I'll use a pair of scissors just to show you that it is possible. But you need quite strong hands if you're going to use scissors because corrugated cardboard is quite tough to cut. That's a 360mm square piece of card. OK, now we can turn it over and we can mark it again at roughly half of 360 is 180 millimeters I'll mark it and 180 millimeters this end and then hopefully we should find that close by there will be one of these what they call flutes which lines up with our mark so we're going to carefully very carefully we're going to use the back of our scissors to just put a slight crease mark across the cardboard. Right, we're not trying to cut the cardboard, all we're trying to do is put a mark in there. So that when we push the cardboard, look what happens. It folds nice and neatly along that line. And there we go, we've folded the cardboard in half now. The next stage is to get some, <clears throat> some plain white paper. Now, this is a4 photocopy paper, but this is not the standard 80 gram, 85 gram photocopy paper that comes with your inkjet printer and things. Um, this is a much higher quality paper. It's got a lot more uh, clay, china clay in it. It's a nice shiny surface and in fact if I just show you the packet it says it's 110 grams per square meter as opposed to something like 85 grams per square meter so it's some 30 percent thicker and a much stronger paper you can use the thin paper but it won't last very long you can try using brown packing paper if you've got any brown packing paper um, because you might not be able to lay your hands on some decent quality writing paper like this what we're going to do 
is to produce a square from it by folding the corner over and then running the edge along there like that and putting a crease line across there like that. We're now going to cut this off into a square. There we go. So we've now produced a square. We need to fold this line backwards on itself. So we crease it the other way as well. And put your fingernail on it if you've got fingernails and crease it both ways so that it will fold easily along the fold line. Right, now we're going to come back to our cardboard again and with our tape measure we're going to measure to the middle this way again 180 millimeters is the middle and now with a ruler we're going to join the corner to the middle with a line and from the middle back to a corner. If you're big and strong like I am you'll be able to cut two thicknesses of cardboard. If you're not then all we need to do is transfer this mark here to the other side like that and draw a line from the corner to the middle on this side as well. Now when we open up we've got a square that goes the other way and what we're going to do is we're going to remove these four corners and we can do that with our scissors and there we go. Now all we're going to do now is to stick this inside here. But before we do that what we're going to do is mark off roughly 50 millimeters. It isn't too important but about 50 millimeters on the edge of your paper like that. And then we're going to cut it off like that. So that that we're going to stick that in there now, like this. Now when you look around in the cupboard at home, you may well find that you've got different types of sticky tape. You may well have something about 20 or 25 millimeter clear sellotape. Okay, but try not to use that because it's not very good at all. It won't last very long. You may well have some of this thin packing tape. Again, it's okay but it tends to tear very easily so experience has taught me look strong not very strong the best stuff to use is duct tape now th this particular duct tape that I'm using is black you normally get silver the great advantage of using duct tape is very strong because it's got layers of fabric which are bonded into the adhesive here's how I would go about doing this Hang it over the edge of the table that you're working on and put this edge right on the edge of your paper there. You need about a third or a half the width of the tape. As you can see there, look, I'm not quite a half on the width of the tape. Okay, and now we need to cut the tape off. Now it's quite important that you don't hang tape over the end here and try not to leave too much of your white paper showing. So try and keep that part as neat as possible. Put it inside so that you can see where it's going to go like this and turn it over so that you can see the white paper underneath here. And what we're trying to do is to line this corner up and this edge up so that it sits nice and square with our piece of cardboard. And then with the middle of the tape, pull the middle over and push it down. And then run out towards the ends. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the other edge. We're going to 
make sure that we don't put our tape over the end of the white. And we put about a third of the width of the tape onto our paper. And we can turn it over. And cut the excess off. And then we can pull the middle over tight and then bring the other sides over as well. There we go. Just make sure that everything folds out nice and easily like this and then fold it in. If I hold it too tight I can't get any air into these little pockets here and I'm clamping this piece inside here. So what we do is we put two fingers inside there to hold it open like that. So we've got two fingers inside and two fingers outside and that way the air will quickly get under these pockets here and you get a really good crack out of it. Well, I hope you had lots of hours of fun out of your banger, because I know that my grandchildren did.